Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Trap on the Boomer Bus Channel, Bears Podcast by Bears Fan. I'm your host, Terry. Happy Friday. And today we are going to talk about Ryan Poles. Now, before I get started, let me just say this is sad. This is all sad. This is completely sad. I mean, there's definitely people out there that are having a good time, and I, I envy you. Um, but because I love this stuff so much, because obviously I do content, I choose to do content related to this, I have to stay within the conversation. And it is so sad what this conversation is. As I said before, I thought we would be, most people would be like me. We're happy, like this is crazy to see what we're going to do. And I can't believe this. Let's see what we end up doing. Either way, this is fun. Nope. That, nope. The Bears fans could not have it. They couldn't stand for that. We will not have it, Tom. So it is sad. It is sad um, because this is not about really the excitement of being a fan. And, you know, for me, typically people accuse me of caring too deep about football and not just having fun, which that's fine. We all fan in different ways. I always say that. Um, but I choose to be a better Bears fan, so I dig into the football of it. But this was an opportunity to just say, this is cool. This is cool. We we won. We, all, we almost went to the playoffs. We got the number one pick in the draft. We have a quarterback that, um, or in the draft that, well, we really got a good quarterback class. And then we got a quarterback that's a top prospect. We also have our current quarterback who has shown some promise. So this is exciting. But no. And that the reason it's gone too far and the reason I know it's gone too far. Yesterday, I get accused by someone for being a fields apologist. And the same day, I get accused for being a, a media slave and going with Caleb Williams. Like, really? This is silly. Like... Um, I'm one to say, I know this is going to turn people off, but I don't care. Um, if you listen to my stuff, you know, I'm one to say that, uh, our politics always matter in everything we do. There is no shutting it out. This is the society we live in. It impacts everything we do. And I just think the way we talk about everything, and I mentioned this with sports media has become so ugly and divisive for no reason. So there's that because if you talk to, if you listen, read, whatever, somebody that wants Justin Fields, look at how they talk about it. Do they ever say, Ryan, I think Ryan Poles is leaning towards this? Or do I, do they say, I would probably do this or I want this? No. Most of these people online and the media are saying, Polls and polls. This was the plan the whole time. Like they know they, they dug in and they're they're telling you what polls has been doing and that it's obvious he's been doing this the whole time. OK. And then the other side. If the, do they say I would lean towards taking Caleb because it is no It's feels it sucks. He's terrible. Blah, blah, blah. He's the worst. Uh, they knew since last year that they didn't want Fields. They've been plotting on getting Caleb Williams this whole time because they knew the Panthers were going to lose all types of stuff. And so it is so extreme and there's no room for the middle, which is what I get attacked for, essentially. Oh, well, you're in the middle. Uh, yeah, because let's use our adult brains. Let's let's use whatever age you are. Let's use our adult brains, whatever level of education you are. Let's use our brain and just ask yourself, is it possible that Ryan Poles likes Justin Fields, certain parts of his game or thinks he has potential, but he also really likes Caleb Williams as a prospect or one of these other quarterbacks as a prospect? Do we, you know, is that a is that a possibility? I don't know. You meet Bears fans that are not on the extremes. They're in the middle. They're conflicted. They don't want to see Justin get uh, you know, to lose opportunity, but they're also excited about potentially getting Caleb. Why do you think Ryan Poles or Eberflus or anyone in that building might not feel that way? 
it's a possibility. But no, online it has to be black or it has to be white. It has to be zero or 100. And it's sad. And then the other thing I'll say, um, as I mentioned, uh, one of my frat brothers is in the NFL. And so because of that, I got to be around a lot more intimately. Um, I got to see Ryan Poles. And as I've always said, these people are people, but it really hit home for me this year. It really gave me a new perspective, a better perspective. And so, but for me, I've never enjoyed just bashing people. That's not my thing. Like, I'm not trying to attack you as a person unless you are a terrible person. When we're talking football, it's just it's just the game. So while I'm about to criticize Ryan Poles, and, and I think my criticism is usually constructive. While I'm about to criticize him, I don't mean any disrespect towards him. I don't, you know, that is a that is a grown man, that is a black man, that is a father. All those things as a husband, I'm not trying to disrespect him or his family. I'm not calling for his job. This is just a discussion about our bears. All right. So now that we set that platform, let's let's go into this. Now, I want to start with the number one thing um, because it bothers me. The Bears fans that are yelling at the top of their lungs that polls has fooled everybody. Poles was doing this. It was Poles all along. Shout out to Agatha. It was Poles wanting to keep fields all along. He fooled everybody. My response is fooled them to do what? Please, and I mean this, educate me. What am I missing? What did you gain? If let's again, let's play this hypothetical. Let's play it out. What did you gain if that's true? If you said, I want to keep fields, I'm just going to lie to everybody. What did you gain? The number one pick price didn't change. The, the, the trade market didn't change. Nothing changed. So what exactly did you fool everybody into doing? It makes no sense. And yet I see too many people yelling this everywhere it just I, I just i really don't understand but we'll dig into that more so what i want to do is we're going to talk about this trade we're going to play it all out or about the situation and we're going to go through each of the scenarios so that we cannot leave any gaps but i'm sure people will find something to twist and try to make it seem like i uh i'm just missing something which I might be missing something, but that, you know what I'm talking about. People are going to stretch things and reach, you know, like us signing Keenan Allen. And I see people are like, well, it's very clear that we were keeping this um, cap space open to get Keenan Allen. What? What are you talking about? The reports literally said, so again, people pick and choose. The reporters that reported the trade literally told you that he declined a pay cut. They couldn't come to an agreement, so he got traded. So how in the world could the Bears have known that before free agency? That makes no sense. Obviously, all the teams know which cap casualties might be out there. So yes, they knew Keenan was a possibility, but to the point that, oh, well, we didn't go after Daniil Hunter because we were saving space for Keenan out. First of all, if that's true, that is a terrible mistake. But second of all, that makes no sense. There's no way we would have known that. So anyway, that's my point. People like to reach. So anyway, let's go through this. Let's go through um, what Ryan Pohl said that I think was the issue. Ryan Pohl set the stage, for better or worse, because at the end of the day, when it's done, it's done. People will pull it up later, depending on if, if it goes bad. If it doesn't go bad, no one will ever care. But if it goes bad, people will pull it up later. But for the next year, no one's going to care. Once it's done, we're going to keep on moving. But what Ryan did was set the stage for the offseason discourse. And back to what I said, these are people like... 
I mean, look, they as much as you think they camp out at the Bears facility and they just stay there, then I, I, I mean, that's not true. They have family. You got people's mothers, brothers, sister. If they know you're related to Ryan Poles, you go to the store, you go to the restaurant. People are going to bombard you. People are going to come up to you. People are going to tweet you, DM you like. To, I, I'm not saying that the speculation impacts their decision, but I will say creating speculation and all the hype does impact your world. And that doesn't just go for polls. That goes for anyone connect. Could you imagine having a family member or being uh, working for the Bears? You could be in the cafeteria staff. You probably have people that know we work for the Bears constantly asking you about the Justin Fields stuff. So you create an unnecessary noise. Now, obviously we're not playing football, so it's not like it's distracting the players from the game, but you are creating unnecessary noise. And so I'm, a, I'm saying from the beginning, we're establishing that it's a positive to not, to get ahead of any speculation and cut all the noise out. That's a positive. At least, again, in my mindset, maybe someone disagrees, but I think that's a logical conclusion. We don't want to create unnecessary noise. So what Poles did going into the offseason was say pretty much what he said last year. We are going to do our due diligence on all the players in the draft. Um, and this time, obviously, he said we're going to do what's right by Justin Fields. And I think that is the key phrase of what this is. Now, mind you, this is one press conference, kind of one statement that we're focusing on. So some people will say you are overanalyzing one part and that's fine. That's your critique. But this is the argument I'm making. So once you say we're going to do right by Justin Fields, what you did was create a binary. You created a binary where either we're going to keep fields or we're going to send fields away so he doesn't he's not a part of the new quarterback you know situation and you you erased the idea that there might be a world where you can have a quarterback competition you erased the idea where there's a world where you might keep justin to trade him later or that you might uh have justin start and caleb you know transition in all of those are possible. They're logically possible. However, once because people don't have anything to stand on, it's hard to argue that. So, for example, me saying a while ago, it's possible we bring in both quarterbacks. The everybody's backlash is so fierce because it's like Poll said, literally, the concrete evidence you have is Poll said he's going to do right by Justin. Do you think that's being doing right by Justin? That's everybody's evidence. Now, I know there's people that will argue even without evidence, but that's solid evidence that people use. So anyone bringing up the idea we have both quarterbacks, everybody's pushing against them. We go through the trade market. Now we got all these people in the media coming in and saying, I think they could have both quarterbacks. And the reaction is still strong. But the people that believe we can have both quarterbacks, they're really strong too. And so now it's just a fight. So I think what should have happened, and again, we'll go through the scenarios, is that you don't put that out there unless you know what you're going to do. But anyway, like I said, um, you you have to, well, I would say you have to, sorry. I'm going to go through the scenarios. I think you have to go through each scenario to have a full picture. So let's go. Number one scenario, you want to keep Justin Fields. Justin Fields is our guy. We think that the um, assets we're going to get back are too attractive. We think these prospects are not necessarily up to snuff. Now, also, I will say I, you got enough time to know by the end of the season. I don't care what anyone says. A GM has enough time in the season to watch the other players. Now, I ain't saying you watching every player, but you tell me Ryan Poles doesn't have enough time to watch 
Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels. Yes, he does. He's not game planning. Yes, he's managing the roster, but he ain't a coach. That's a different level. Plus, you have an entire department dedicated to scouting these people years in advance even. So if you really felt like these or these quarterbacks were not on Justin's level, you would have already known that. But despite that, in this scenario, we're keeping Justin Fields, 100%. You go to the media and you say that. You go to the media and you say the plan is to bring Justin back next year to be the starter. We will still explore all our options at number one, but we're open or not open. But you said we're open to all of our options at the number one pick. That's what you said. OK, you shut it down because, as I said before, there is no upside to lying about it. And some people will say. Well, if you um, if you tell people that you're keeping Justin, well, then you're not getting as much value for the number one pick. It is the number one pick in the NFL draft with a good quarterback class. There is no losing value on that. Let's get that straight right now. That is a terrible argument because this is what happens. Let's say the commanders were like, oh, they keeping Justin? Okay, let's try and lowball them. They call us. We don't accept it. What then happens? The Patriots say, huh, Commander sent them a lowball offer. We could do better than that offer. Let's call and see, uh, you know what? And this is another thing. If, if Ian Rappaport and reporters have um, connects and teams, if people sitting at home or former players have connects in teams or think they know what's going on, you better believe the teams have connects with other teams. So don't tell me, oh, no other team would have known they would have. Yes, they would have. Word travels fast. So Patriots say they lowballed them. Let's get them a better offer. They call the Bears. Hey, we got this offer. And then another team. Let's just say the Broncos or somebody. Whoa, we heard, you know, the commanders lowball the Bears. Let's see what we can do. Oh, uh, well, we're talking to the Patriots. Oh, well, what are they offering? We could give you something. Okay, send me your offer. And the market is going to create itself. No lying about keeping Justin is going to kill the market or boost it that high. The market is going to create itself because there's so much demand for the pick. So you can come out and say, just like, and you know what's funny? For the people that say you can't do that. Didn't we do that last year? Didn't we keep Justin last year and still got a great pick or a great trade for the pick? Did we get that because they said, hey, yeah, we we don't know about Justin? No, that is not what happened. So to me, if you're keeping Justin, you go out and you say, just our plans is for Justin to come back as a starter. We're open to any. We're looking at all our options at number one. The benefit is you get it done early. You don't you get ahead of any commotion. And you could get this done early before free agency, which is what we did last year. So you can't, I wouldn't say you can't, but I, I don't know an argument against that. That makes any sense because the number one argument is, no, you got to lie and make people think that you're not keeping Justin to get a better trade. Not that that, that logically doesn't work out. All right. So scenario number two, you're in the middle on Justin. And you, 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 you don't really know. You count on the fence. So this could work one of two ways. We go into the offseason. We're open to keeping Justin. Maybe not. We think that the, the league looks at Justin like a fringe starter, maybe a starter. Uh, or I should say a starter. OK, we expect to get pretty good compensation. Then you come out and say, our plan right now is to bring Justin Fields back, but we're going to explore all our options and we're going to do all our due diligence for the uh, players in this draft. 
So now teams, now this is the way that the fan base, the media, everybody can be like, okay, well, this I might not agree, but based on what Paul said, it's very clear they might bring both quarterbacks in. He he told you that they want to bring Justin back and they're going to do their due diligence. So we can't sit here and go crazy saying they can't have two quarterbacks. Polls just told you, oh, okay. So now you cut out the benefit of this tactic is you cut out all the speculation. And then you go through the, the discussions. The trade market isn't what you thought it was. Okay, then you got to have a plan of how you bring in two quarterbacks or you let the process play out and you say, okay, draft night, we finally made a choice. We're going to trade Justin for peanuts and draft Caleb. Or you say, we're going to go with Justin and we're going to trade this pick for, for a good package. You let the process play out. The other route in this scenario is that you think the league views Justin as a backup. If you think the league views Justin as a backup, but you're on the fence about keeping him, then once again, I think you just let the process play out. You say the same thing. The plan is to bring Justin back, but we're looking at, we're doing our due diligence on all the players for the number one pick. And then you listen to offers. If they're too low ball, then you keep it moving. Now, I'm telling Justin this in this scenario. You letting him know. All these scenarios, you letting him know kind of what you're thinking. Because it's because there's no reason to leave him in limbo. And so you like, these offers aren't looking good. Justin, we're, we're probably gonna prepare to you know keep you. And we're probably going to bring in a quarterback. And this is how we want to do it. Like I said, whether it's a competition, whether it's you start, then we trade you later. Whether it's you sit out and then we trade you later. Whatever it is. Um, that's how you handle that. If Justin's like, absolutely, I'm not. I can't do it. Then you trade him for peanuts. All right. The last situation, last hypothetical, you know 100% you don't want Justin Fields here for the new quarterback. You want to get Fields out. If that's the case, then you come out and you say that. You come out and say, um, our plan is to move on from Justin and we're going to do our due diligence on all our options at number one. And again, if someone's arguing to me, you can't say that because it kills the trade offer. You've already made up your mind that you don't want him. So it's no longer about building assets. It's about getting him out the building. And if that was the case, then I'm going into Indy, letting all the teams know I'm taking offers Thursday through Sunday. On Monday, Justin's getting traded. So give me your best offer. It might be a fourth round. It might be two fifth rounds it might be two six two fifths whatever it is give it to me i'm trading them i'm getting them out the benefit is we get it done quick justin's on to his new team everybody wins those are really the only scenarios those are the only scenarios so out of all of those scenarios justin is our guy we're keeping him 100 percent you should have never came out and said, hey, we're going to try to do right by Justin because the and again, people are going to argue. But as you've heard over the last few months, the interpretation by most of people in the media is that that means we're probably going to look to trade him if we like one of these quarterbacks. That's how people interpret it. If you were going to keep Justin then don't even put that out there. Say the plan is for Justin to come back right now. The same way the Vikings said the plan is to bring Kirk Cousins back. They don't have Kirk Cousins. But the plan was to bring him back. It didn't work out. That's all you got to do. The plan is to bring Justin back right now. And if you 100% want him, the plan is to bring Justin back now as the starter. The, the trade value for number one pick will not get hurt if you said that. Scenario number two, you are on the fence about Justin and you really don't know which way you're going to lean. 
You think he you think the league wants him? If the league really wanted him as a starter, then they would have gave you the offers. If the offers aren't there, okay, we need to be ready to have a plan to keep him later through this process and trade him later. Or make a decision of when we're going to keep him as our starter and trade our number one pick. And the last scenario is you didn't want Justin, then he should have been gone by now. So when you look at those scenarios, which one do I think is most likely is what's happening right now? I think the most likely scenario is the Bears were on the fence. And that and I don't mean like everybody is 100 percent 50 50. That sounds weird to say. Um, but what I mean is there was no real consensus to make a decision. Whether Poles wanted one thing and Eberflus wanted another, but the D-line coach wanted this, but Waldron wanted this, but the owners wanted it. Whatever the mix is, I don't think there was a consensus. And so it was, we're going to play this out. Now, it very might well be that Poles and everybody knows, hey, this is going to be a long game. We're not going to get it done quick. Either way, you sh what Poles messed up was by coming out and saying we're going to do right by Justin and setting the context for what people expected of this offseason, including Justin from what it seems like. Again, I don't know. Now, of course, there's Bears fans that are going to be in the comments that probably didn't listen this far telling me how everybody is is at the theater right now. They're at the theater putting on their best acting job. They're on Broadway right now. They're on State Street. You got Poe's acting. Justin's acting like he's sad. He knows exactly what's happening. You're just an idiot. They're playing you. And again, I don't think that's possible. But if that is your feeling, my question to you is for what? What has it gained you? Do you really think that the price of the number one pick is different right now than it was before. It's absolutely not. So, again, those are the scenarios. Um, and I think you handle it a different way if you Ryan Poles. And so I think he, he, he messed up this whole Justin Fields situation. And he allowed... For all of this negative, and I mean, it's going to be discourse either way. But I think there's some things he could have got ahead of and shut the door on, and and it was it's kind of been unnecessary. Now, as far as the ultimate decision, obviously that will be decided on the field because as much as I guarantee you, I already know what's going to happen. I deal with trolls all the time. What is what's going to happen is once we make a decision, all the people that were on the, the side of that decision, they're going to be unsufferable. They're going to be online going crazy, making jokes, all this stuff. All the people who were on the other side, they're going to disappear. You're going to have a few loud mouths talking crap, poses, an idiot, whatever. But they're going to disappear for the most part. And they're just going to wait till the season and then they'll pop back up. Well, I'm a Bears fan either way. And that should have been the whole thing. We should just be ready because for me, I'm not about to react strongly one way or the other. I'm going to be like, OK, this is what we're doing. Let's analyze what that means. And I'm looking forward to it. And then the decision will be made on the field. But um, yeah, it's unfortunate. So anyway, that's my thoughts. That's the argument that I'm presenting. Um, go down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share it around. Get the conversation started. And remember, stay up and bear down.